Ruth and Taylor, welcome to Better With Bikes. Thank you for having us. Yeah, happy to be here. So our producer gave us a little tip ahead of time and said, better with bikes, better with wine. Yeah, I think we gave him that tip. You did. <laughs> you want us to be chatty? Good tip. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you're here, and I'm glad you're enjoying a little bit of wine so we can start our conversation as we're in your off-season to be official. Not many friendships come with their own hashtag. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how you first met. Oh, how we first met. I probably knew Ruth before she knew me. She was like a famous junior, speedy little racer. And I was kind of like, I got into the sport a bit later, so I felt a bit old, even though I was only like 21, 22, but she was a young buck. So I knew who she was. Uh, I don't know what she thought. Well, I kind of know what she thought about me now, but I'll let her tell you. Uh, I mean, my first memories of Taylor, are we, I went to my very first trip over in Europe with USA Cycling. And Taylor was my roommate for the trip. And I just remember her telling me about our mechanic, and he was this German guy. And she just was like, just don't be scared of him. He's very intimidating, but he's nice. And then I remember just like, yeah, that we spent, I think we were together in somewhere in Isagum or something in Belgium, just yep. hanging out together. And Taylor was very helpful. And then we did spend some time in Luca too. Luca was yeah, nice. Yeah, Luca was nice. In Italy. Belgium's mm-hmm. a little depressing, so, you know, you got to do what you can to. Yeah. Liven, liven that up. It's a gem is a gem. It was not a great place. <laughs> we All haven't right. been back since, I don't think. <laughs> nope, nope. Um, but that was, yeah, 2011 or something, so a while ago. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Many, many great memories since we'll learn more about. Yes. So you do both race for USA Cycling, the Americans on the team, but Ruth, you have a bit of an accent. Can you explain that? <laughs> Yeah, I was born in England, actually. I was born just outside of where the World Championships were in Yorkshire in a little town called Oakworth. Um, Yeah, and I moved when I was six to California, and I lived in California for two years, and I lived in North Carolina for a few years, and then I've been back in California for most of my life, I guess. Uh, I consider myself pretty Californian, although now I live in Colorado. Colorado today. Nice. You have, together, been referred to as, and I quote, the lighthearted core of the team. Oh, who that's said that? Nice. That's huh? nice. <laughs> How about that? Do you agree and uh, why? I would say we're pretty lighthearted. We like to joke around and I find that it's really grounding and really nice to have like a, a really good friend on the team and someone that you can go to. I mean, all the girls on the team were friends, but I feel like it's really nice to have someone that's like a really good friend. Just makes you feel like home away from home because we spend so much time away from our people. So it's really nice. And maybe that makes us fun and lighthearted. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think we both kind of enjoy just having a silly moment before a race because I think we know each other so well and we know that inside we're both probably like having a major panic attack. <laughs> so like the fact that we can just like make each other giggle right before a big race starts is, is really important to us because I think we're probably just pretty nervous in reality (laughs) that is very but like because we know each other so well it just it works you know like (laughs) we can just make each other laugh in that last moment when we're just uh pretty nervous (laughs) well I, i think it's awesome for everyone watching because too much focus is put on the serious aspect of the sport and maybe not the fact that it is fun and you're finding ways to build that into it which is really cool yeah i think personality is always it's always good to add to the sport because there's not enough of it so we're a visual brand and we take thousands of photographs a year and we have one that really has become one of our favorites. So this is a photo from stage nine of Giro Rosa. Can you please explain to us what is going on here? And that is for anyone who is watching us. Uh, I remember this stage. I feel like, you know, it's by stage nine, you're pretty tired and we're all kind of, we're tired and we're a little bit nervous and I don't even, I don't actually remember what this stage was like, but I remember being like, I think I should just squirt Ruth with some water right now and make us giggle because we're really tired and we just need a little, just need a little pick me up. I didn't know actually the cameras were going to catch it. So that's pretty great. Yeah, I had no idea pictures were being taken, and I don't think I really <laughs> caught what you were doing at first, too. So this photo in particular, I'm, like, looking at you, and my brain isn't quite registering what is happening. And I'm like, what is she doing? And then there's a whole series of photos that captures it really well, actually. But then we just start busting up laughing. Like, yeah, what you're, is she doing? You're yeah. looking at me did, with did a bit of disgust. Did you return the favor, or what came after this I photo? I think I would have if I'd had a water bottle with me, but I don't think I did. Yeah, no, this I think was I just, planned. like, gave her a look that was like, mm. 
I yeah. don't know that I'm impressed with you right she now. She had but. no water. I was, I, this was definitely planned. I was like, she can't retaliate. <laughs> <laughs> but there'll be future opportunities. Oh, for yeah. sure. Okay. And just water in those bottles. Definitely just, just yeah. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't squirt energy at her. That would just yeah. be mean. Or protein. Okay. Or wine. Or protein. I might squirt some wine. No, that's a waste of yeah, wine. That would probably be <laughs> squirt it well. into my mouth. Yeah, in her mouth. Yeah, that would be good. So your aspect of the sport is growing. What needs to happen for women's cycling to continue to grow? Mm, TV coverage, I think, for me, is the biggest thing. I yeah. think we, you know, like cycling grows by sponsorship and the way that people – Sponsorship works is by people seeing whatever advertisement is that you're trying to make. And until more people are seeing the advertisements that we are, then we're not going to really be able to continue to grow. So I think that right now the UCI has some good rules about at least 45 minutes minimum TV coverage for some of the bigger races we have. And I think we just need to keep working on getting that kind of bigger and more people interested in watching it and stuff like that. Yeah, I find that anybody that actually sees our races they're always like, your racing is so exciting. It's almost like they're surprised. They're like, oh, women are fast. And our races are shorter than the men, so I feel like we can race a bit harder and a bit more aggressive for the entire race, whereas the men, it's kind of towards the end. And, yeah, they're, I think once people see it, people are hooked, and then people want to see more of it, but there's just not always the outlet for that. So I think, yeah, coverage is huge. Tell me advice you would give to young women who want to follow in your steps. Oof, that's a tough one. I would say have patience. I wish um, that was something people had told me, but it's not so easy when you're young and you're, I wasn't even that young when I started, but when you want something so bad and you want the steps to be these massive steps and you see these women who, like when I started, Mariana Voss was just winning everything. And you <laughs> literally. just, yeah, <laughs> literally everything. And you just think that you just should wake up and be Mariana Voss, but <laughs> it takes a really long time. And um, it's, there's so much in cycling. I think it's one of the hardest sports in the world because it's, it's hard physically. It's a mental game, tactics, it's teamwork. It's so many things are involved in a bike race. Everything has to go right. And I think just having patience and, and, and confidence, the confidence that you'll get there, but the patience to, to realize that it's a process. Yeah, I would agree with what Taylor said. Um, yeah, just just patience for sure. And knowing that it's really hard for everybody, you know, like just sticking with it and remembering the beautiful parts of the sport for sure. So when you talk to people who are not familiar with cycling, how do you explain what you do for a living? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Sometimes I'm like, you know the Tour de France? Because everybody's heard of the Tour de France. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's like that, but I don't race for three weeks, thankfully, ever. Um, <laughs> no, um, just kind of like that. I think I used to do track cycling a lot, and that was really easy to explain to people because it's like, well, you're on a circle, and you just go around, and most people have heard of running or something, so it's kind of similar in some ways to that. But, yeah, it is funny. Just, like, say you're a professional athlete and kind of branch off from that. But yeah. most people know what cycling is to some degree. Like most people have had a bike when they were little or something. So, Yeah, sometimes it can be pretty awkward because at first people like will ask, what do you do? And I usually say I'm an athlete, which of course leads to, well, what kind of athlete? And then you say cyclist and they're like, well, how far do you ride? And it's like everything is very – it's a hard question to answer because it depends on if it's a stage race or a one day or a million other time trial. There's like a million ways you can answer. So sometimes like if I'm – not in a super chatty mood, I'll be like, I'm an architect. Perfect. <laughs> Ends the conversation yeah. right there. Doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it's just, I know that it's it's so, it's hard to explain what we do. And sometimes people will just look at you like, mm. some people get really inspired and excited by it. And that's always really cool. But some people look at you like, wait, what? <laughs> okay. So are there any myths about women's cycling that you can help us debunk? That we're slow. <laughs> yes, good point. That we're slow and not aggressive and can't race bikes. Mm. And are you just a fallout if we race more than seven days or 100 miles? There's a million. I could go on for days about that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Pretty much the same. Yeah. That list. About that. Yeah. Are there questions that you're frequently asked once people understand what you do? <laughs> what are the questions you feel then? How uh, far do you ride? Uh, yeah, Same that's month. a big one. Just like how far do you ride pretty much? Well, like how many miles do you do a year or 
stuff like that is a big one and honestly I don't know I do everything in time I don't yeah. do anything in miles sometimes I'm like you really should know that fact just to tell everybody just that I'm helping people. people but, but I live in Colorado it's, it's like yeah it's, you can't you can't divulge the details of your training plan yeah right yeah it's always how many hours a week do you train but it, that ebbs and flows so much if it's a recovery week or if you're building it's like where you're at in your training so there's no like block answer for that I usually are just like 20 hour yeah. I don't know that's pretty <laughs> much what I'd say take yeah. an average 20. just take an average so you are at present in your off season can you explain to our listeners what off season actually means it means I take full weeks where I don't have to ride my bike if I don't want to ride my bike. I take two weeks definitely completely off, and then if I want to ride my bike maybe for a little bit in the following two weeks, and I can, but I pretty much don't ride my bike for two for full weeks straight. And then um, you have two more s- months that are kind of like still off-season where you do a lot of base training and not so much intensity before you get ready for the season. Yeah, I think it's a little different for every rider. I just, even just talking to the girls on the team, it it differs. Um, But for me, I'm very similar to Ruth. I take two weeks of absolutely no exercise, which is more difficult than it sounds for us. Um, Two weeks just super chill, and then the next two weeks I start to do things that I don't normally get to do during the season, like running and hiking and, I don't know, paddle boarding, anything that you don't normally get to do just to kind of mix it up. And then you start riding again, usually in November, um, but yeah, it can, it's kind of like a, a slow build unless you have to be fit really early in the seasons like the Australians. I don't know how they structured their <laughs> season, but yeah, I think it's, yeah, off season is a little different for everybody, but for me, it's a time where I get to do more of the things I want to do and less of the things I don't. That's what my coach writes in the training peaks. He's like, do all the things you want to do and none of the things you don't. And yeah, I eat, I'm a little bit less, um, structured on like what I eat. I'll eat what I want. I drink, I don't actually drink a ton during the season. I drink like a one glass here or there, but in the off season, I'll have two glasses of wine with dinner if I want. And yeah, so it's kind of a time to just like let loose and be free. And splurge. Splurge a little bit. Without those normal restrictions. Yeah, exactly. Do you think there's a difference between how your women's team and the men's team approach that window of time off? <laughs> yeah, the boys seem to be pretty extreme to one degree mm-hmm. or the other. And they'll be like, oh, I gained X number of pounds this off season. And I'm like, oh, boy, that's a lot. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I don't think I could do that. But maybe that's male and female physiology a little bit, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, like, I, I don't know. I think it's not the same for every single person on the team, man or women. I think we have everybody. Like, as a general cliche, it does seem to be that the boys go from, like, one extreme <laughs> to the other extreme, while the women seem to live, like, in my personal opinion, a little healthier the entire year <laughs> around. Like we don't hit the four weeks off and we're like, we're gonna just freaking eat seven bags of McDonald's French fries in one evening because we couldn't a month ago and now we can. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. well, even though I understand why now maybe it might be more okay, but I still don't wanna do that because I no. don't think it's gonna make me feel good it's later. Feel terrible. <laughs> like I still wanna feel nice for the rest yeah. of my evening, so. Mm-hmm. The boys are very extreme, I feel like. Funny you should mention that. We had an opportunity to speak with Mads earlier, and he talked about an occasional trip to McDonald's during this <laughs> short break period and yeah. mentioned many of the items, plus a lot more <laughs> on the menu. That <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, we've got have. them pegged. Yeah, <laughs> all right, yeah. all right. Even keel around the year instead of highs and lows. Yeah, I think it's nice. a bit better. It's a little more uh, balance. Balance is good in everything. I think there's a lot of things about being a professional athlete that aren't necessarily healthy, and mm. I think the health, the off season is maybe one of those things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back and, and talk a bit more about in competition in season. Is there something that you just cannot live without? <laughs> While you're competing. I know what we're both going to say. <laughs> you go first. Coffee. <laughs> coffee. I take my pour over coffee set and my coffee beans everywhere I go. And it's like a little piece of home. My morning routine is the same no matter what country I'm in. I always have good coffee. And even if it's a lot of stuff to pack, I don't care because it makes me really happy. Your favorite brew. Oof, my favorite brew. I like so many different things. I like a really light roast. Like I like a, a natural process coffee that is really light and bright. And um, yeah, a, a nice light light roast, I guess. There's many brands I like, but yeah. 
I won't I'm, go into that. I don't know anybody that drinks as much caffeine as Taylor drinks. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, okay. sometimes yeah. we take caffeine, like, before a time trial. I'm like, I think you need to take triple this because yeah. you're not going to feel it. I don't feel it. Uh, <laughs> it's really very impressive sometimes. I, think. <laughs> um, I definitely need coffee to survive on any day. Like, coffee is not just for racing. But I really love Harry Bow in racing. Like, <laughs> if there's no Harry Bow in the bus, and you sometimes have to, like, stash your own Harry Bow because on our team the Harry Bow goes missing like oh mm-hmm. not missing it just disappears within we know like a blink of an and we all know who we takes, know who it. takes <laughs> it she may or may not be a rider but we love her anyway <laughs> Ina <laughs> <laughs> um, but no I like it. Harry Bow's in my pockets when I'm racing so as the miles start to increase again where are your favorite places to train mm. In the summer, for sure, in Colorado, in Boulder. I live in Boulder, and the summer is amazing there. But um, for the winter, it's not quite so amazing. Uh, but I still do stay there to train. <laughs> um, I just had some interviews with Saris, actually, who make all our trainers. I'm like, I love you guys, because you really <laughs> help me in the winter. Uh, but no, I think Drona is where I spend some more time, too, and it's really nice there. Yeah, I live in Northern California, just north of uh, San Francisco, mm-hmm. and there's some beautiful roads around there, and I love it. It never gets old. It never gets old at riding Highway 1 and seeing the ocean. I've, I've lived there eight years now. I grew up in Utah, and I didn't actually see the ocean until I was like 12 years old, and so I'm obsessed with the ocean. So anytime I can ride to the ocean, I do, um, and it's just so beautiful there. And I don't spend as much time in California as I do in Spain, so when I'm in California, I really savor getting to, to ride there. 2020, what's the race that you are most excited about? Ooh. I know mine. I'm really looking for looking forward to the Ardennes. Um, mm. I really like that week of racing. I think I really like it every year. Um, but yeah, I'm still gold for sure. That's mm. a good one. I love the Ardennes, but I love the Giro. I love, I, I, I'm not a pure climber and I will probably never win the Giro, but there's just something, I love racing long. I love day after day after day racing and I love Italy and I always really enjoy the Giro, no matter if it's a, a good one or a bad one. And I think, um, yeah, we might've been a little disappointed last year. So I think we're gonna focus on it a bit more this year. And I'm just really looking forward to like the prep for that and uh, hopefully some, some good stuff coming out of it. Yeah, 2020 is a big year with the Olympics, obviously. Um, but I think for me personally, really just trying to enjoy the year up until then because anything can happen and we have a really strong, luckily, like it's a really good thing, we have a really strong U.S. team. And so getting a spot's going to be a really challenging thing. And I think remembering to have a good year regardless of if you make the team or not is going to be really important for next year for every women mm-hmm. cyclists on the U.S. team because like we only get to race over in Europe so many years of our lives and these races are really big so like to do well at a classic is a really really big achievement so I think that first and foremost like focusing on the spring and then seeing what happens yeah it's going to be a stressful year <laughs> we got to try to find the fun Olympic years are always hard mm-hmm. I'm convinced already that you will find the fun yeah. <laughs> and and help others to do the same. Yeah. Through our nervous panic, we will giggle. <laughs> we will giggle through. What is unique or special about this team? Oh, I feel like there's so many things. I, I really love that both of our directors are females and former female pros. I think that adds a lot to our team, and it's something I've never had on another team. Uh, I did have a female director once before, and she was also phenomenal, so I always really... I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with a male director, but I just think it's really important to have a director that's been in the sport, has been in your shoes. I think they're really good at putting the rider's needs first. It's not always, um, a lot of other times it can be, you know, they, they don't really see, they've never been in your shoes, so they don't see that perspective. And I think that's really important. And I think they did a really good job of picking a team that would, that would mesh well together. I think we all get along really well. I think we have a good, um, a good roster of all different types of writers. There's not too much overlap, so there's not a lot of infighting for results because I think we all have very specific different qualities that we add to the race. We have really good team captains, and I don't know. I, obviously, Trek is huge. The way they're like supporting women, I'm not just saying that because we're on the Trek podcast right now. I really think that you guys are at the forefront of supporting women cycling, not just on the professional level, but just women on bikes, and I think that's really cool to be a part of, and it's something that really affects the team I believe yeah I think 
we have some really honest, open directors, and that makes a huge difference for sure. Just like being able to have a really honest conversation about anything and not feeling like you can't say something or something like that, and that's really huge. Having a really good sponsor is definitely a big part of it with budget and how you feel going into a race and how well you're taken care of and everything, and then how the directors selected the girls, and they really put quite a lot of effort. I think between Ina and Georgia, they put a lot of effort, but they also asked a lot of outside opinions, and we have a really, really good group of, of women to work with. Tell us a little bit about the recent Women's Sports Foundation Gala in New York City. Yeah, I got to go to that. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, that was really fun. I got an invite to go and participate, and I like, walked on stage with a very many famous people. Um, uh, it was really cool to be there and support John getting the award. Um, it was really, yeah, a really fascinating event for me. Like We've been to so many cycling-specific events, but then to go to an event that was for all sport and to see that was it was really awesome really cool evening out and really cool to be there for john to receive the award